hey 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 everybody god's children i have a word for you guys so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pray and then we're gonna get into the word of the lord um and just talk about what it is that he's doing and um you know and, and hopefully just um give you guys insight and confirmation um to where you guys are with everything so let's get in to prayer dear heavenly father you know the reason we are coming before you god we are coming because we're hungry and we want more of you and we want to be used by you god and i just pray god that you speak through me that the holy spirit speaks through me that it is none of me and all of you god if it's me then you know there's no need for us to be here because we don't need to know what haram is thinking and what haram knows but what the lord is saying through me god so i just pray that the holy spirit takes over that you open the ears of your children to listen to the message and open their hearts to receive the message and then god give us instruction on what to do with the message god i pray that it speaks to each and every one of us within our journeys god and that it speaks to us and that we are able to move because this is affirming things for us in Jesus' mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen all right you guys so for the last couple of months um god has really been speaking on um on his judgment so we're just gonna get into this um and he's been showing me you know jeremiah 11 11 um a lot and you know just telling me even just throughout this year um about his judgment coming and how you guys just um just about his judgment coming and he's been leading me to scriptures and um he's recently started talking back on it a lot again to me about his judgment and we you know he told me jeremiah 11 11 again and also joshua 11 11 and then you know god when he gets to going and he gets to talking he starts leading you everywhere so then i also ended up in isaiah 11 11 and so i'm just gonna read jeremiah so i'm gonna start with what god gave me first and it says and this is jeremiah 11 11 you guys and again i'm reading from the king james version um so if you're reading from a different bible things might be tweaked a little changed um but this is what i'm reading so if you want to read along with me exactly what i'm reading then i have the holy bible oh, you guys i got i got a whole bunch of bookmarks in here but i have um i'm reading the holy bible the king james version so therefore thus says the lord behold i will bring evil upon them which they shall not be ex uh, which they shall not be able to escape and though they shall cry unto me, I will not hear, uh, hearken unto them. So I'm going to read that again, but more clear. <laughs> Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will uh, not hearken unto them. And that is what he gave me uh, months ago, but he recently started uh, bringing it back to my uh, remembrance and keep saying 11, 11, Jeremiah. So um, he's been recently talking to me about this again. And I remember when I first was reading, a lot was going on in the world and I didn't understand, but I know it was a lot of, um, you know, God talking about like even if you watch my first video and I'm reading Jude you know and it's talking about just the things that are going on and then how you know I was breaking down even the scripture um in second chronicles 7 uh, 14 I believe where God was saying if my children who are called you know come back and they're crying you know we pray and we humble ourselves and all these things and I broke it all down you know we started then and and God was just breaking down, uh, 
more and more and more and even before then so he's been telling me about jeremiah a lot and now he's been bringing back a lot of um you know <laughs> vengeance is coming you guys so he's been talking about vengeance and so also he gave me like i was saying joshua eleven eleven, and you guys when i was reading this i was like whoa god like he this is serious stuff, you guys. And, and Joshua 11, 11 says, And they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe. And he burned Hazard with fire. And uh, you guys, God is just saying the vengeance, the vengeance, you know, that his wrath is coming. And, you know, um a lot of his children actually have been returning you know he's been calling for us for quite some time his children especially with corona it's been so much downtime you guys that god's really been trying to call us away and call us back home and bring us back home even so but people were missing the mark and a lot of other things were going on during corona too you know because the still time that we had the home time that we had when we didn't have jobs and some people were getting stimulus checks some people were working from home like but it was a lot of at home time and and god wanted to use that time where you guys you know had your free time to come on back home to spend time in his presence to seek him diligently and to come back home to him to be back in the arms of your father is what he's been wanting and repentance you know and if you guys have been paying a lot of attention anyways especially in the spiritual realm i mean the holy ghost is out here saving god is really out here saving people snatching his children back so when you guys see a huge shift in things like a lot of these worldly faces and a lot of these worldly things happening and then you see a sudden shift how now like a lot of people are just going into ministry or a lot of people are just preaching um more on god you know it's because of the flow of things in the way that god is turning things over so it's such a great shift and it's been happening you know even like i said even when corona had first started he was pulling a lot of people in and you know especially the remnant getting them ready for what's to come consecrating them stripping the world out of them and getting them in right standing because he's getting ready to do such a huge move and um, which actually he's already doing so if we're just paying attention and we are sensitive to the spiritual realm and sensitive to the holy spirit then we will understand the times are changing the shifts are happening things are becoming new and god is just saving his children a lot of people are coming to salvation you know there's the two type of people there's the ones where things start to happen and they run from god and then there's the ones where things start to happen and they run into the arms of god and god wants his children to run into his arms because he wants to protect you and keep you safe you know the bible makes it very clear and jesus made it very clear that we are not of this world and we never will be so if the world hates us just remember it hated him first and then another important thing to remember as well in that scripture is that he says that he's overcome the world you know and we know this because when he died on the cross right within those three days he went down to hell right he snatched the keys from the devil and then we go on to other scriptures and it says that he had triumphed over principalities and all these demons and demonic things you know and he's overcome it and and jesus is still still you guys on top you know he's still lord of lord above all else and i know i say that and it's because i mean it and i want you guys to fully understand like when we are in the presence of our father we are in the presence of a mighty, mighty king, a mighty warrior, a mighty Lord. You know, the God who created all things, everything under the sun is created by God. 
by God everything so it's not one thing that's off like God is not an off by any minute any second type of thing nothing catches him by surprise he already knows what's to come he knew what was going to happen then and he knows what's happening now so right now he is doing a heavy clarion call for all his children he's trying to will them back in but you know some kids are still kind of you know fiddling and got their foot stuck in a net in the world and so you know but he's going in to pull them but at the same time you know he gives us all free will and when you start to realize things are getting really really busy you you need to really really find time to sit in the presence of god and say god what is going on what do you need me to be doing right now what is it that i'm missing or what is it that i could be used for to help you on your mission so we can together bring heaven on earth letting your will be done letting god's will be done not our will because we don't know nothing we think we're so smart because we do our homework right we do researching we read the bible from front to back we go to bible school we do all these things but the bible also says is god uses the the lowly the ones who are fools and makes them wise why is that because god needs you to never think you know more than him he needs you to understand yeah you know a little bit but i know all things so don't come into you know his presence of like questioning him and telling him no god this is the way that it should go let us be real if we created something ourselves and we put all the little gadgets and the things in it to make this thing work we don't need to get advice from other people on how to make something work when we ourselves made it Okay, we made it. It's the same. God just needs us to get in line. God just needs us to return. God just needs us to humble ourselves. God just needs us to be empty vessels of the world and our own fleshly desires and to be filled with the Spirit to push through the agenda God has for the world. We don't need to be telling God what He needs to do. We did not create God. We didn't even create our children. I, I don't have any, but you know, when the, you know, man and the woman, we have a baby, like we don't even create, that is God's creation in us whom we are a home to. You understand? So we don't know what the child's going to be like, how they're going to act, how they, we, we learn as we watch. God already knew when we were up in heaven how we would be putting us into the wombs of our mothers, creating us to be everything that we need to be everything that we need to be. What happens is we come into the world pure, you know, with everything we need and then you know, our mothers give birth to us and we come pure and innocent and whole and full, needing nothing. And then we get into the world, we get into the presence of people who are contaminated and then it contaminates us and all these beautiful things that God put in us, they don't call it out. What they do is shame us for and make us think we think we're too good and we're this and we're that and, you know, and, and then get bullied for the things that God has specifically placed in us to be used for such a time as this to be used for such a time as when god is ready for you to stand firm and lead the generations behind you you understand so it's not like we don't come in complete we come in this world complete we do but what happens is we start to get too much knowledge we start to think we know too many things we start to try to do things on our own we are not designed to do things by ourselves we are designed to have the holy spirit which is why jesus left right and he told his disciples i have to go because the only way they're gonna you know going to get the holy spirit the guider the counselor the one who's gonna help them make it through the world is if jesus goes and then think about the love of jesus okay because people also don't realize if he was alive today we would have to figure out where jesus is having a conference figure out where he where he is how to get to him pay to do this pay to do that but we don't have to we don't even have to be rich to find him we don't have to take a flight to find him 
All we have to do is call on his name. All we have to do is get into his presence. All we have to do is pray because if we are born again Christian, if we are baptized, you know, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then we are the homes of the Holy Spirit, meaning he is everywhere we are going. There is nowhere we are that he is not. And there's nowhere that we go that God has not already been. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus was so sweet to go back and to sit on the right hand of his father after completing the mission and to give us all access to his Holy Spirit, to God's Holy Spirit, the same spirit that was in God is in us who are born again, okay? and who give our lives to the lord and so there's a lot going on in the world right now as we all can see but if we know and we pay attention to god then we know us as the remnant us as the children of god we cannot be touched when everything goes wrong and the world starts to dry up and the food and everything is you guys know what's going on in the world and there's just not a lot of access to anything we don't have to worry about that what happens to the world is for the world what happens to god's children remember you guys we have the inheritance of the king so we are never broke never poor never lacking anything because god himself is not lacking anything he's not lacking anything so if we right have an inheritance from our father god who is in charge of everything then we need to fall in line because how does that scripture go you guys seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and then everything will be added unto it unto us everything will be added unto us so when we seek first the kingdom we are spending time in god we're spending time with god we are asking god what is going on in heaven what needs to be done what can i do how is the kingdom ran god what is order because god is of order that is seeking the kingdom right what how does god's kingdom run how do things work what is god's kingdom for you understand seek first the kingdom what is this kingdom right and then when we establish that and we're seeking first you know seeking his righteousness now we're understanding god now we're falling in line with god now we are letting the holy spirit do a work in us and change us to where we are now righteous and blameless and holy and sanctified because we are a new creation in christ letting the old things pass away and the new things come which are from above you guys which are from our father and then he says everything will be added unto it we will be so in sync with the move of god because we are dying of the flesh daily and living in the holy spirit so now everything will just be coming to us and it's not because the universe is aligned no it's because we are in full alignment with god and god's agenda understand we as christ believers as christian as believing that jesus died on the cross rose again on the third day and that he is the son of god we don't believe in this universe stuff this new age stuff we don't believe you know oh we're just spiritual come on the devil is spiritual who's your god who is your god figure it out and then when you realize that God, the God of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the only one true God, get in line. And when you get in line, then we will be able to do the work of God and to save souls, you guys. That is all that this is really about. It's the devil who wants to destroy us, and then there's God who wants to heal us. God who wants to use us to save souls, to make it to heaven. And then Jesus goes on to say he's going to prepare a place for us where there's a place of many mansions. There's no sorrow. 
the devil is preparing for people to burn in hell for eternity okay he's a loser a low life what do they say misery loves company that is all that is but if you are of god then you know god wants you to have joy god wants you to have hope god wants you to have you know what everything better than that him because we can do absolutely nothing without him Okay, so basically, you guys, God has been talking to me a lot about the remnant rising, okay, in boldness, which I'm so excited for the remnant. I'm so excited for the move of God. I am so excited for what God is doing. Anything God is doing, I, I'm excited for. I want to be a part of it. I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited that I'm a child of the Most High. I'm excited that I don't have to figure things out. I just have to submit myself to God and He will work it all out for me. I feel like a wonderful spoiled daughter one who can sit in the presence of her father and he is going to protect her love her encourage her okay uplift her tell her who she is god is such a wonderful god that i honestly feel sorry for people who are going to make it into heaven by just a little bit i could not imagine living life in the land of the living without god I could not imagine it. I don't want to imagine it. And I'm thankful I don't have to. I'm thankful that the mighty hand of God is on my life. I am happy that I believe it's what? Chronicles, Second Chronicles. You guys, this is actually like one of my new favorite scriptures. Um, because, first of all, y'all, y'all need to read the Bible. Because if you read it, God warns us about everything. I mean, there's stuff in here that you'd be surprised i'm just saying so anyways listen because this is second chronicle um no second corinthians my bad you guys second corinthians four and four and it says in whom the god of this world the devil okay has blinded the minds of them which believe not meaning those of you who don't believe in god those of you who don't believe in jesus those of you who don't believe in the Holy Spirit, those of you who think we're just reading some fairy tale book or who thinks that we're just serving some random nobody, like, this is who he's talking about. This is who God is talking about, okay? Like, God is letting us know that those who cannot see and believe, their eyes have been blinded by the devil, you guys, the Bible warns us about everything. And remember, yeah, people wrote the books, but it has been, you know, the Holy Spirit impressed, inspired. It's God inspired. So the Holy Spirit was speaking through these people to write down everything God felt we needed to know. Okay? And so then it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine among them. And so this is beautiful because, you know, there's going to be people whose eyes are blinded till the very last day. But God loves them so much that they can be on the dying bed. And God will still give them a glimpse to repent and come on back home to him before their last breath. But how sad is that if that is what it takes? I don't want to get to heaven, you guys, and my assignment was not fulfilled. I don't want to get to heaven, you guys, and I've done nothing with my life. My best years are in heaven. No, my best years are going to be on this earth because I'm going to do what the Lord has called me to do. And if I do that, then I know I know for a fact I will be fulfilled. The reason why we are empty, you guys, is because we're chasing a world that we're not a part of to be filled. What we're missing is the Holy Spirit. What we're missing is God. People can't fill the void. Drugs can't fill the void. Things can't fill, fill the void. Sex can't fill the void. Conversations with people can't fill the void. It cannot. The only thing that can fill the void is God. And why is that? Because God will never leave us nor forsake us. We can let people put them on the pedestal, worship them, 
because that's technically what it is, right? We live, breathe, can't do life without them. And then what happens? The moment that they want to leave us, well, we're empty again. Why do we want to put our trust in man to fulfill a spot designed for the Holy Spirit? Makes no sense. No sense at all. Because God will never leave us nor forsake us. God loves us. He dwells in us. We can apologize. We can ask for wisdom, guidance. God is going to come through. God is not a man that he shall lie. And God is not a God to design us to be destructed. Okay, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If we are, you know, we gravitate to what we spend our time in. If we spend our time with God, we will want more of what God. It's like, you know, um, you really, really want something, right? And somebody tells you how to get it, but you don't get it. Like, you're like, oh, that sounds so amazing, mm, but I don't really want to go digging in the back to find that treasure chest or something, right? But God will give you a way to get to the glory, to get to the resting place, to get to the restoration, to get to the come up, to get to the next level, realm, dimension. He will give you access and instruction to get there, but people don't want to do the work to get there. That is the issue. If we put in the time to spend time with our Father and, you know, who is God up in heaven, everything we want, we can have. And what we don't need, he can uproot up out of us. But see, the enemy, if we're spending time in the world doing these worldly things, and you guys, I'm speaking from my own testimony because I came from the world. I was a worldly singer. I was out here doing things, okay? I was out here doing things, out here having so many connections, met so many people, and I was in the world, chasing the world, and even when I would, you know, perform at this event, that's such a big event that I'm, like, excited for, eventually it'd come back down to, hmm, I still missing something, you know, and, you know, and then it's like, the next happiness comes when what? writing a new song or the next happiness comes with preparing for the music video and then the next happiness comes for from um performing and then it's like it comes when these things come but if we are doing the work of the lord we're not having this thing of like we're still empty after accomplishing the things that we think are so huge that is not the case when we are in submission to God and we spend time in his goodness, you guys, we are so blessed and we don't even know it. We take advantage of the goodness of God. We take advantage of his mercy, his grace. We take advantage of his love. We take advantage of his mind. We take advantage of his creation, including us and the things he gives us. Like we don't make our heart beat. This air we're breathing in and out is the Lord. God breathed into Adam and he came to life. This is not even ours and it so ain't the devil's. So how are we giving things to the devil? Why are we giving him access to our life? Why are we letting him blind our eyes? Why are we letting him take advantage of us, our family, friends, and loved ones, and destroying us? It does not make any sense. We need to be retaliating. We need to be rebuking and binding. We need to be getting in the word of God and saving his children who are also us, who are also our friends, our families, like a generation, you guys. So many of us are called for things that Satan could never give us. He could never. He could give us a knockoff brand, but he could never give us. And like when I read with you guys Luke 4, right? He promised God all, or Jesus all these things, right? And then as soon as Jesus denies it, finishes the task, right, going through the testing season uh, as he was in the wilderness and he denies it and sticks to the word of the Lord, sticks to his father's business. He comes out and he gets more than that, more than that. Right afterward, didn't it say that, you know, in regions and all these things that he became famous, like his name went through, like he was known. 
And then let's think about it. He already owns all of this. All of this. The kingdoms the devil is trying to give him. That's a knockoff. Knockoff. Anything the devil has to give you is a knockoff. Okay. Do you want the Louis bag, the Fendi bag, the original, or you want the knockoff? Right? It's going to break down. The love ain't real. Like, let's, let's be real, you guys. And if you spend time with the enemy, you're going to want the things that he wants, right? Which is to be self-made, to be his own God, not have to ask for help, not have to go to God. But the crazy thing is, is the devil still can't do nothing unless God gives him the okay. And that's just what it is. So, you guys... I'm about to read what he told me um, June 24th, 2022, and he gave me this word at 2.33 in the morning, so a.m., and it's Isaiah 11.11, 11, and it reads, <laughs> And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand upon the second time to recover the remnant of his people okay so you guys i get excited just speaking about the remnant i i know i'm part of the remnant and i'm excited to do the work of the lord nothing more i want i used to want to be a singer i used to want to be the next rihanna the next beyonce i used to want that life almost had that life had it not been for the lord snatching me and saving me i was almost there i was well on my way well on my way and now i know that there's greater purpose and that is serving god and i'm so excited that he chose me to do it there is nothing i'd rather do than the will of the lord because he knows what i can take he knows what i can handle he knows who he designed me to be and i know that he will be there everywhere i go he will go first he will show up with me i'm not going to be fighting by myself as a matter of fact when you realize that you belong to god the enemy can't touch you no way there's nothing he can do and so anyways you guys then it says which shall be left from Azariah, and he shall set up an ensign. Get my my handwriting be a little, you know, but bear with me. I think that's what that says uh, for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together um, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Then it says. Um, <clears throat> The envy of Ephraim, I think that's how you say it, y'all, uh, shall depart, and the adversities of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim, uh, Ephraim, it's almost like my name, Elimad, I gotta change some letters and add some, but um, it says, shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, but they shall... Fully, y'all, I've got a price in my handwriting. I think that's what that says. I may have to actually read it from the Bible, but God had me bouncing around, so it's not like all of, um, uh, like one, two, three stuff is moved around. Okay, so Isaiah 11. Let me read from the Bible. Yeah, my handwriting be fancy sometimes. I don't be knowing what I be writing. Okay, so where am I? I am on 13, I think. Okay, so 11 and 13. Okay, okay so it says, but they shall, um, so 14. They shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil uh, them of the east together. They shall lay their hands and let me see how much i wrote on that okay on edom and moab and the children of ammon uh, shall obey them and the lord shall utterly destroy the tongues of the ephraim of the egyptian sea and with his might when shall he shake his hand over the rivers and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over a uh, dry shroud and there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left 
from Azariah, like as it was to Israel in the day that the uh, that he came out of the land of Egypt. So God is doing a second calling of the remnant, right? And while these things are going on, God is going to destroy the wicked, the things that are happening around, but he will make way for his remnant. So remnant, get ready to rise because our time is coming. Um, and then he took me to 12.1. I'm still in Isaiah. It says, and in that day, they shall say, O Lord, I will praise thee though thou wasn't angry with me okay you wasn't angry i think that was angry with me thou thy anger is turned away and the comfortest me and you comfortest me behold god is my salvation i will trust and not be afraid for the love no for the lord jehovah is my strength and my song he also is become my salvation so what is that saying even in that you guys we shall not be afraid for god is our salvation so while all these things are happening we don't have to worry god is going to make a way god is raising up the remnant to come forth and to start snatching souls back as well because the devil thinks he's doing something that which is why a lot of this things is is happening strong in the in the spiritual realm that some of us can actually feel especially intercessors uh, can feel what is going on and if you're sensitive enough you'll be able to uh, and spend time in god's presence but anyways and you see a lot of this stuff is happening in the physical but a lot of this ain't gonna have nothing to do with god's children because god is raising up a remnant to break them free okay to take right as it said as we read the devil has blinded the eyes, but God is going to use his remnant to help his people, free his people. So people are getting ready to come out of hiding and step into the move of God and step into their full position to go ahead and to bring heaven on earth as God wants it, as God has planned. And there's so much going on in the world as well, guys. And, you know, if you are spending time with God, then you know, like... Things are shifting. A lot of God is answering a lot of our prayers right now. You know, the prayers of the righteous is being answered. God has us all like simultaneously praying and praying for his will to be done. So he's rising up his people. He's tearing down the Saul's and he's rising up the David's. And it is so powerful what is getting ready to break forth. You guys don't even know. But the Holy Spirit is moving and he is coming through the churches. He is coming through the people. You guys are getting ready to see more and more of God's move. And you guys, you know, if you're on the right side and you chose God, you are going to see his goodness and his glory. You are going to see him move in such mighty ways. So pray and ask him to equip you to be a part of what's going on because this is what you want to be a part of. Because we already know the devil is not going to prosper. His plans will not prevail. He is the, the losing team. If you want to be on the winning team, get right with God. Repent. Come back. Apologize. Tell God you're sorry. Humble yourself. Ask him to lead and guide you. Ask him to open your eyes. And for those of you who are questioning if God is even real, have you ever sat there and asked yourself, while you were sitting there, have I prayed? Have I asked God to even show himself? Because the problem is a lot of people are believing God because of how they were raised and not because of their own encounter with God. I believe in God not because I was raised to. My parents weren't even Christians when I was ch chasing the Lord. So what I'm saying is if you have for yourself an encounter with God, and I'm talking about Jaira, I'm not talking about the one of this world, you know, the lowercase g's, I'm not talking, I'm talking about the, the big G. Okay, so God, you guys, when you have an encounter for yourself, nobody can tell you anything. They can pull out the scripture and say, this doesn't even make sense. They can pull out theology and, and all these, you know, things, um, all this literature, all of this history, all of these facts, all of these, um, what do we call them? Um, not research, but... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, statistics, all of these things, right? 
they can sit here and say, well, it can't be true because do, 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 do. But when you know God for yourself, can't nobody tell you nothing, nothing. Just like, you know, people could be looking at my hair and be like, oh, her hair is blonde. Like, it, you're not even going to argue with these people. You're not. Because you know God for yourself. This grows out of my head. How are you going to tell me? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I have a couple little, you know, um, gray pieces that I will not color because the Lord said that's a crown of life, okay? I think, you know, I'm excited for the day my hair is all gray naturally. But whatever. Whatever, that's not the point, you guys. <laughs> but when you know him for yourself, they can't tell you nothing nothing so spend time god if you are real show yourself to me god if you are real show me get me out of this situation make a way for me god send me somebody who knows you god just let me see you in the grass god open my eyes god humble me tear me to pieces prune me redo me show me show me yourself because you guys, I know some of you guys will be sitting over here and it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'm spiritual and, and I feel, God is not a feeling. Let, let's get that together. Yeah, sometimes the Holy Spirit can make us emotional and connect to certain things, but God is not just a feeling. He's a person. You want to know what he thinks, talk to him. You want to know what he's doing, talk to him. You want to know how he is, read his Bible. Jesus says, if you believe in the works that I've done, you will do more. So if you don't believe, don't expect to see, you know, yourself doing more. Don't expect you to be healing and, and, and doing the ministry and the work of God. And I know some of you are probably thinking, you know, oh, well, you know, you can tap into that with the dark room. Yes, you can. But guess what? You go into hell for that. I mean, unless you come back to God and make God your number one, you know, God is merciful and graceful. I ain't going to tell you you're going to go to hell because you could change your life. You know what I'm saying? You could give your life to God. But, you know, who don't want to gravitate towards the light? Who, if your heart, I mean, not your heart, but if your house is dark, you're going to want a candle to see. Because if you can't see, you're going to run into stuff, right? Who don't want the light? Who don't need the light? Even evil needs light. Because they can't see, right? If God is the light, they need God. They cannot do things unless God tells. They would not be here if it wasn't for God. So let's not be confused. But anyways, you guys. So then I'm led to 13 and 3. And it says, I have commanded my uh, sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger. Even them that rejoice in my highness, the noise of a multitude in the mountains. Like, you guys, I gotta hurry up because my computer talking about the storage is full. Okay, it says, as of a great people, a tumultuous, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together. God is rallying up, you guys. Okay, the Lord has host um, mustard is mustard. Oh, Jesus. What word am I saying here? What am I in? Is that it? 13 and 3. I think it's one. Okay. Mountains. Okay. Mm, okay, mustard is the host of the battles. Um, they come from, in my even reading five, you guys, I need to get it together. They came from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord, and the weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the one of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the timely, no, from the almighty, where am I at, seven? Okay, I'm going to read six again. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. 
I don't actually remember writing that. Did I write eight? Okay, I did. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. So this is like a woman giving birth, okay? Like the, the pains of a woman, okay? Uh, they shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames, okay? Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruels both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it oh you guys hold on i think i go did i do okay the sinners out of it and then uh, i got skipped to 11 and i will punish the world pay attention and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their inequity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud, of the proud, mm, to cease. I keep saying that word. <laughs> Anyways, and will lay low the hostiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man uh, than the golden wedge of, let me see here. Ophrae, I don't know how to say this word, y'all. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. And in the day of his fierce anger, and that is in 13, and then you guys, he had me in here, and it says, and it shall be as the chaste row, R-O-E, and you guys, um, you guys, trying to see something because I feel like my times might be a little off. Um, was it the 25th? So whatever day that, um, cause this is what I wrote and then it says June 25th. So, um, my days might be a little mixed, but it says 2022 Roe vs. Wade was overturned. <laughs> And so that's a note that I wrote. So, and that I wrote at 3.13 a.m. And so everything that is going on in the world, you guys. So, I say all this to say, you know, with all my words and all my misreadings, who cares? You get the point. So I say all of this to say, children of God, now is not the time to be playing games. Now is not the time to be um, confused. You need to pick a side. You need to come on home to your father because unless you do, there is consequences for it. And there's always consequences for our wrongdoing. And you know, with, you guys already know with each choice there's something that follows and now we have to come to the time of repentance apologize to our father apologize for thinking we have it all figured out apologize for thinking that we don't need him apologize for thinking that the world is better than him because it's not i've been in it i have not had more peace than the peace that i have and or even the fullness of feeling purposeful since i came back to him came back to god since i've given the world up because the enemy has access to you your lives when you are mingling in the world he does through words you say through things you open yourself up to because, you know, the eyes and the ears are the gateway to the soul. The things you listen to, the things you are watching, you are inviting. And that's real. 
everything comes with something. There's a price for everything. Nothing is free. Giving your life to God is the price you pay. But it's for his namesake. And God will go to battle for you. That is not a problem. But when you're hanging around the devil, you don't think he's going to come and hang with you? When you're doing the things he likes? You don't think he's going to show up himself? Grab a drink with you? You guys, there's so much I could say, but I won't. But um, it's time to come back home. God's judgment is falling. More judgment is coming. And there's more things that are going to be happening. I'm here to just let you know. And this will be confirmation, like I said, to some of you. This will plant seeds in some of you. This will get some of you back on track. And others of you who are very upset with what's coming out of my mouth, Listen, I'm fine. I'm fine with that because the Bible says, you know, it's not blood, flesh and blood. It's it's a spiritual thing. So the spirits are mad. I'm I'm not mad at that. Why wouldn't we be? I'm talking about God. So I say all that to say, get it together, cause it's coming. So pray about it. Read about it. Ask God. He's going. He's gonna give you an answer. Don't think that you get to demand him and tell him when or how to do things because he's, he's created you. Be respectful. You want to talk to your mother and your father like that. So be willing to become more knowledgeable and to learn and to spend time with God. Other than that, you guys have a beautiful and a blessed day, and I shall talk to you guys later. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.